right after the show. It's cool, don't worry, no one's gonna say anything. Allowing me a kind of 
relaxation that I ever felt before. That and my feet felt like sponges. <laughs> In an instant, I realized the way most people describe being high is all wrong. It doesn't dull you, it doesn't shut you down. It retunes your frequencies, refocuses your brain waves. Stoners can watch television with the sound down, not because they're too stoned to care, but because they're no longer watching the program. They're watching the shapes, the pixels, the lines, the play of shadows, the ever more supercharged commercial graphics rocketing out to the electric of the ozone like Superman in front of a green screen. And those colors, the way blue shares something with red. And likewise, when stoners listen to music, we stop hearing just the melody and the words, and instead we hear inside, the space between, the timbre of the instruments, the pulse of the guitar against the bass, the rise and fall of individual violins inside a group of 12, the patterns of rhyme, and the dance of consonants, the way the pitches begin and then fade away again, some faster than others, some never really fading away completely, the color of the notes. The way blue shares something with reds. Yeah, and the textures. The way the air moves in front of you to make way for the music. That is exactly how it is! The, the color and the, the air! You're a fucking poet, man. We stoners experience the world in a way the uninitiated will never even imagine. Certain things just don't matter anymore. Money, career, gadgets, all the accoutrements of status and rampant patriotism. And only when you're straight again do you realize that those things didn't matter when you were baked because... Because... Because, because they, they really shouldn't, shouldn't matter. matter. The human brain processes 400 billion pieces of information per second. We're only aware of 2,000 of them. Marijuana dials down that editing system. It opens up the floodgates of the mind, like a circle like a spiral. Like a spiral, like a meal, meal, meal. meal, but then a meal. The true stoner chooses his words not just for what they mean, but also how they taste. So now you have your pick of all those amazing, interesting little pieces of information. All those bits and bites that usually get sorted out without our knowing it. Now all the things that are supposed to be important are lost in a sea of everythingness. No longer gripping our reality quite so tightly. Now allowing new things to come swimming along, relegating the important, important things to a small, swirling eddy of neuroses just over the horizon, out, out of sight, sight, out of mind. In short, the holy butt sweeps away from your brain all the bullshit that keeps you from being the happy, thoughtful, engaged person you really are. A fully realized being like Yoda or Gary Busey! <laughs> and the trivia washes back to shore.
flashback, a little Brechtian commentary. Could be anything. Look, I thank you for your creepy welcome and your little made-up songs, but you're obviously a nut of some sort on some kind of drill, or pill, and I need to be going. Aw, oh, don't be that guy. I bet you could form cubic sarconius in your ass, am I right? <laughs> Leave my ass out of this! What are you, some sort of pervert? It depends on who you talk to. Have you had a hard day, Mark? As a matter of fact, yes, I have, though I'm not sure why I'm telling you. People open up to me, which may be because I get many of them stoned. It's not a pretty story. I just threw my stress ball at a very powerful U.S. Senator, and then ran out of my office and had myself a little breakdown in the men's room. Third time this month, and now I'm a little embarrassed to go back again. See, I've been developing all these new ideas for solving America's biggest problems. Like legalization of marijuana? No, like eliminating poverty, fighting racism, rebuilding our education system, universal health care, energy independence, protecting the environment. I've been trying for five years to get my contacts in Washington to sit down with me so I can outline what I've come up with. And this jerk in my office today wouldn't listen to any of it. Yes, I'm not important enough to have ideas worth this precious time. Sometimes I think we just need to buy the World Coke, you know? Have you been listening to me? Part of it. Hey, would you like to come on my journey with me? Where are you going? I'm going to see the president. I'm going to tell him his policies are fucking up our country. And then a lot of us would like him to try something different. He seems a nice enough guy. I'm sure he'll listen to recent arguments. You can go too. Really? President, have you thought about what you're going to say to him? Well, yes, I have. I'm going to say, Mr. President, please stop fucking up America. Just like Lucky Charms Your mind is 
open wide And look what's there inside Cannabis day Push the 
smoke all the way down. Good. Now hold it as long as you can. Wait for it. Wait for it. And exhale. Oh, man. <laughs> that was great. Are you feeling relaxed now? <laughs> that would be the ass of kicking in. What? No, I may be kidding about that. Now, what's really bothering you? Second. 
I'm an evangelical Christian. We aren't gay. <laughs>
Harvard. Harvard? Harvard! <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Let us pray.
I can beat the shit out of you if you try anything, but I'm not going to because I'm feeling very passive and centered right now. <laughs> What's it like? Since I stopped fucking men, all my other senses have heightened. <laughs> Good for you. So, we're gonna storm the White House and tell the chuckling motherfucker in the Oval Office that this country has been repeatedly sport fucked by his dickhead millionaire friends, and he needs to unfuck it up right now before I tear his goddamn arms off and feed them to the goddamn homeless. Suzanne, the president is an evangelical Christian. He's a good man. Scoob, being religious isn't the same as being good. A fucking man to that. <laughs> Again, he was a died in the will stoner before he found the evangelical, so that ought to count for something. Oh, I think he's a good guy deep down, just not that bright. He means well. Yeah. So I didn't miss you when she tore my heart out and handed it to me on an earthenware serving plate that I made for her! <laughs> I think most people mean well most of the time. It's just that some of them are stupid. We shouldn't blame them for that. They just smoke a J now and then. They finally see the big widescreen. They quit making such hideous mistakes when they vote and they enter into the global debate over some of the great issues of our times. We need to turn America into a whole new nation, a marijuana nation full of happy, thoughtful, aware, engaged citizens. And I don't think I should go. I don't want to yell at President Birch. He's a personal hero of mine. Well, then you simply must come. You don't have to yell at him unless you want to. And maybe the president will listen to some of those ideas you were telling, trying to tell the stress ball guy. You think? I've always wanted to meet him. I have an autographed picture hanging over my bed of him shaking hands with Charlton Heston. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you could buy it and market this marijuana, I think it would sell like crazy. It already does. But if we could do it legally, I bet we wouldn't have any more Republican presidents. <laughs> Oh, you know, smoking the leaves from the tree of knowledge. Yeah, I'm learning anything new lately. Every day. <laughs> Dude, you've lost some weight. Thank you for noticing. Oh, Jesus, these are my new friends. Uh, Suzanne, a lesbian theater dude, Don. And Mark, a freshly out of the closet gay former Republican. Never said I was gay, and I'm still a Republican. It's very nice to meet you all. I'm Jesus Christ. You don't look like Jesus Christ. Nobody does. <laughs> I've come back because so many people have been distorting my teachings lately, and I just like to set everything straight again. Not the whole second coming into the world thing, just fixing what's broken. And performing in a community theater production of Jesus Christ oh. Superstar. I asked you not to tell anyone about that. He played Judas! Isn't that bloody? <laughs> distorting what you said? Why didn't you just write your own book way back when? It could have saved us a whole lot of moral outrage and holy war. Yeah, 2020 hindsight. <laughs> then why not do it now? Yeah, I'm gonna tell all bestseller about those lost years. Dude, what did you do all that time? I never told you this. Oh, most of the time I was in India with the Buddha. What a trippy time that was, man. <laughs> We'd stay up late every night smoking this terrific Thai stick, talking about the meaning of God and the nature of existence. What a mind that guy had. <laughs> I always thought the Buddha was a big stoner. <laughs> so when will the second coming happen? I kind of like to be ready. Uh, <laughs> I hate to break this to you, Mark, but the book of Revelation isn't about the end of the world. What? It's about the fall of the Roman Empire. I don't even know what to do with that information. How'd y'all get that so wrong? Just be ready for real. What do you think, Mark? Am I really for real? Well, were you born of a virgin? <sighs> Only one of the Gospels mentions that little tidbit, so it's doubtful. Weird, huh? Nah. Zeus popped his kids out of his forehead. That's definitely weirder. <laughs> Look, a lot of the details about me were dreamt up later on as sort of an early Christian target marketing. To promote and jumpstart the early church, get the pagans on board, that sort of thing. A lot of the pagan gods were said to have been born of virgins. Roman emperors, too, so... Helped if they said the same thing about me. But you are the son of God, right? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe God is your heavenly father? Of course I do. Well, if God is your father, doesn't that make you the son of God? What? It's okay, we all need our myths. I just figure if the Bible got the solar system wrong, we're not going to get wrong, you know. Perfect.
perfectly understand them. So what has happened to Christianity? You used to be really big. I'm still big. It's religion that got small. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen to me. I haven't introduced my friend. Fanny Mae Butcher. Is she a clown? I used to be married to a televangelist. Then we got our ministry stolen from us three times. Three times. Fanny Mae and I would like to join you and your friends on your journey to see the present. 
And perhaps you and I can have a little talk along the way. We're going to see the president. Oh, good, I can ask him to pardon my husband. Do you think Mrs. Birch might give me her famous recipe for pumpkin crumble? I should warn you, I'm also working my way through some sexual orientation issues. I know, God oh, crowds all that. Dude, listen. The last time I was here, what, 2,000 some odd years ago, nobody thought about their orientation. They worked, they ate, they slept, and every now and then, if they had the energy left, they had sex in the missionary position. God never told people they shouldn't be gay. They wouldn't have even known what that meant. Okay, then explain Sodom and Gomorrah and all that scary stuff in Leviticus. The Sodomites were not gay, if that's what you mean. They were just barbarians. They didn't want these strangers in town, so they wanted to rape them and humiliate them. That's what conquering armies did back then. The sins of Sodom were pride and a lack of hospitality, not being gay. It says so all over the Old and New Testaments. A lack of hospitality. Put yourself in their burden, stop. <laughs> the Hebrews were a nomadic people in a dry, nasty environment. To them, hospitality could mean the difference between life and death. And don't forget, the Bible also says that God had already decided to destroy Sodom way before the whole deal with the angels and the townspeople. So what you're saying is, gay people who are rude to strangers will be, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> the word, homosexuality, didn't appear in the Bible until 1946. If God had a problem with gay people, do you think he would have waited so long to say so? Maybe there weren't much of a problem up until then. <laughs> Why do you do that? The way you Christians twist the Bible, reinforcing prejudices, that's not what it says. But why do you let crazy people tell you what to think? There's someone I'd like you to meet. Services. Oh, Jesus. Yes. No, 
websites. Like they're, they're set out with a screensaver, right? That's how they are. I just download them and pull them up. The only problem is you can't do any animation with the imagery. But the words, it will pay up. Yeah. The other I know. That would be a great device for it. There are teachers at Webster Groves that could write that show. I remember that. Hi. Hey. Hey, Mom. Hey. 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 Hey.
I used to live further. <laughs> I used to live in Barnhart, which okay. is another city down. Yeah, but I went to school in Herky, which is again in Oklahoma. Oh, I'm like, hmm, I'm three place. Right. I'm 200.